morning. My name is Don Sines, and this is my tiny house, also known as Chewy's house. I'm currently parked at North Mill RV Park in Louisville, Texas. I've been living in my tiny house for a little bit over two years. The builder of my tiny house is uh, Peter and Christina Hugler of Indigo River Tiny Homes in Garland. Uh, the dimensions of the tiny are 32 foot long, 10 foot wide, and 13 and a half foot tall. Through the process of finding the right builder, deciding what I wanted, being able to fund it properly, selling my house, and then finding this location, God was involved in everything that I did. There were so many things that fell into place I mean, it's, it's been a blessing every step of the way. And I have the best neighbor in the world. They, take, they watch over my place when I travel. They take care of my property. They're great neighbors. We're gonna take a tour of my tiny house. And one of the first things you'll see is my BMW Adventure motorcycle that I've recently got and been spending a lot of time riding on lately. I only bought this about three months ago, so I do have a, pl a trip planned this Thanksgiving down to Big Bend Park. So one of the things you're first gonna see when we uh, come onto the lot is that we've got some really nice green grass here that I'm very proud of and my neighbor Bob helps me take care of, but I've got the nice the greenest lawn on the property. I've always liked the fact that green grass just adds a little bit of the color palette for where you live. So I really enjoy having a nice green lawn. One of the other things you'll notice that I've added is I've got a nice custom built 14 by 12 shed that I keep my motorcycle and my two mountain bikes stored in. So another feature of the tiny house that I really enjoy is the fact that I've got some nice custom built steps that my neighbor Bob was very kind enough to build for me himself. So that's pretty much it for the outside of Chewy's house. How about we go inside and uh, take a look at all the features in here. So once again, welcome to Chewy's house. Uh, Homesteader Deluxe built by Peter Hugler in uh, Indigo River Tiny Homes. It's 372 square feet. Once again, it's 32 feet long, 10 foot wide, and 13 and a half foot tall. Some of the unique features that I enjoy about the house is it's got a lot of light. It's got a lot of windows, a lot of big bay windows in the living room area, windows above the sink. So here in the living room area, one of the things I really enjoyed about it is this fold up table that I use for my desk. I got this from a friend of mine in El Paso who does a lot of custom woodwork. This is called a Mexican Rosewoods. It's got a live edge to it, so it's just kind of a unique feature we were able to add to the tiny. Obviously, room for the TV set. Uh, this is the back stairs up to the uh, storage loft. We have plenty of storage. One of the things I like about Peter and his builds is the fact that he just utilizes about every space you can think of for storage. The hidden storage in the step compartments slide out drawers here in the step and even a slide out pantry type door drawer there for stuff and then of course one nice closet right here that I use to store my cleaning supplies vacuuming and everything in and you'll also be able to see the bay windows to where you got plenty of light in the uh, tiny house I really enjoy it the mason jar wall sconces were a nice little touch one of the things that took a little bit of time to engineer into the house was the living room space to fit a couch in it that I wanted size-wise. So Peter gave me the exact dimensions of what would fit in here. It took me about two months to find the right couch. This one's nice because it's got dual electric recliners. I wanted to make sure that the, that wasn't an area that I had to compromise on, that I got a nice, good quality couch with good enough size. You could actually fit four people on this couch if you wanted to. So that's one of the nice features I really enjoy on a regular basis here. Right above me is the second loft, which I consider a storage loft. I just keep my over some boxes and some supplies and stuff like that. So let's go up and take a look at that real quick. So this storage space is large enough to put a queen size mattress in. So one day, if necessary, I could use it for a guest bedroom. But for right now, it's just my storage space for some, uh, some boxes and some uh, other supplies right now. Okay, so going into the kitchen area, 
first thing we notice right here is this L-shaped butcher block counter. Once again, Peter does such a good job with storage that if you look on the, uh, we painted all the cabinets an offsetting color of blue that would semi matches the outside of the tiny house. And there's an under counter um, microwave. You look at the, uh, I wanted to make sure that I had a, a decent sized stove, so it's a four burner propane stove. I can, and as Peter likes to say, you can actually cook a whole turkey in the oven. All the drawers are, are soft close. I really like that feature. That's a nice quality piece that he puts in. So right here we got a 24-inch farmhouse sink. I really enjoy the look of those. I've seen them in numerous houses, and I wanted to have one for me. Open up shelving for the all my dishes and cereal supplies, some family pictures. Another feature, full-size fridge. It's got the uh, refrigerator on top two freezer compartments underneath. I didn't want to compromise on that. That was one of the areas like on the washers and dryer that I didn't want to compromise. I still want just one person, but I, I'm not real big on shopping. So I just wanted to try to limit how many times I had to go to the grocery store. This is also the pullout for the trash can. And one of the other really unique features I like the way Peter utilizes space is a slide out pantry like this. I really, really enjoy that because I can put a lot of stuff in there. And once again, more cabinets up above the side. They're all soft closed. So I really appreciate that. More storage cabinets here. Underneath the stairs, it's got all my appliances, some medical supplies. So Peter does a really good job of engineering space into his builds. One of the things that helped me transition into a tiny house is I'm usually on the road in a hotel 100, 110 days a year. So I'm living in a hotel room that's small anyway. So you kind of get used to those confined spaces, even though coming from a very large house and on five acres, it took me two stages of downsizing, getting rid of crap that you've been collecting for 40 years. Other than a couple of adjustments to the lifestyle, it really wasn't as severe as I thought it would be. The last couple of years I was living in the big house was I didn't even go upstairs because my bedroom was downstairs, didn't have any kids there anymore, went through a recent divorce. So it's just like me in this big house and just, it didn't make sense. You know, and the, that kind of spurred me on to investigating the tiny home situation. When I finally decided to get out of living the large house lifestyle, a couple things happened that made me seriously consider that. I went through a divorce. The Texas property tax situation, I just felt like it was a waste of money. You know, as you get older in life, you tend to think more about your retirement. The downsizing part was very, very interesting because I lived in that house for about 25 years. So you really don't know how much crap you accumulate until you have to move it. The first step was deciding which I wanted to keep and that would fit, and then getting rid of everything else. So selling things like furniture, tables, the big bulky items, and then giving a lot of stuff away. I'm very active in my church, so I gave some stuff to people in the church. And then moving what's left over into a 10 by 30 storage room. So then when my tiny was done, I went through another stage of taking what was in that 10 by 30 storage room and making it fit in here. That was another purge of unwinding items. So I actually looked at things two times. It's like, do I really need this? And, and actually, it's kind of funny. I still find things here that I don't need anymore, that I haven't touched in a year, that I do get rid of. It's actually a very freeing feeling that you get from getting rid of certain things. So in here is the bathroom, and it's really got some unique features to it. I was working on the final configuration of, the, of my tiny. I originally wanted a 28-foot tiny length tiny house, but when I told Peter that I wanted to have a full-size washer and dryer, and he said we can only do that with a 32-foot. 
So that's how we ended up with 32 foot because I wasn't real fond of having a combination washer and dryer or a stackable. So this is a nice thing that I really enjoy. Just the fact that it's one of the things that I wanted to have my tiny. This uh, 34 inch vanity fit perfectly in this space. Uh, Peter allowed me to choose it and bring it to him. It's one of the things I like dealing with him because uh, he allowed me to bring certain things into the build. I really like this mirror because it's a touch screen. It lights up like that. It's a nice feature in here. The shower is something that's really eye-catching because of the doors. This was a little bit of a problem in the uh, final build because it was on back order for about three months and got lost in transit two different times. So it caused a lot of, uh, it was one of the main delays of getting it built. But I really enjoy it because it's a full-size shower for me. I'm not exactly a small guy, so. I really enjoy it. You got to clean it, you know, the glass. Even though I wipe it down after every shower, it's about once every three or four months, I got to scrub it down really good. It's nice because of being able to have the walls, the movable walls like this, that you could actually have a little bit deeper footprint on the floor pan and still have it function in the size of the, the, the uh, bathroom. And this is the only part of the tiny that's painted is the inside of the bathroom for reflecting the light. Everything else is the natural pine. So that's enough for the bathroom. The next stop on this tour is going up to the bedroom, which is very unique because of what Peter builds. And I really enjoy it because, like I said, I can stand up here. I'm 5'10". I can stand up here without worrying about headspace. So this will actually fit a king-size bed. I only have a queen-size mattress here right now. But I can almost all the way to the end of it, slope of the angle of the roof, I have to stop here. But... It allows me to stand up, get in and out of bed, which to me was a big thing. I didn't want to have to climb a ladder to get in here and didn't want to crawl around. So I like this model of Tiny that uh, Peter builds. It also gives you space for uh, full-size closets too. You know, I've read, in the very beginning, I read about people complaining about how hard it was to make their beds. And maybe because of the feature of this, because you know, this is the ceiling of the bathroom underneath here. I just make my just spin the bed around on the platform. I don't have to crawl into it or nothing. I mean, just spin the mattress around. It's another thing. I had so many clothes I had collected over the years that needed stuff I wasn't using. I just got rid of it, got rid of it, and got rid of it. I'm still getting rid of stuff that I don't use. I tend to overanalyze things, so I really did my homework on it. It took me about a year and a half of searching and deciding, and then like one of the first things I realized when I was when I was doing some shopping was there's actually a little bit of a misnomer when it comes to tiny houses because there are tiny houses that are park models, and then there are tiny houses that are actually what I consider a tiny house on a trailer frame, to double triple axles. The park models I didn't like too much because that's to me that's too much of a mobile home that's been downsized a little bit. And then of course the quality of the uh, materials that they use for the build and everything. And then I started searching for a builder. I looked all over the US and uh, obviously looked at people's websites and reviews and some of their videos. And I finally decided to pick Indigo River Tiny Homes in Garland, uh, which is an hour away. Peter Hugler and his wife, Christina, were very receptive and open to my ideas then he was very respectful of what I thought I needed or what I wanted and he would tend to tell me okay this will work good for this this is not a good idea and here's why and he explained it to me that way and that made sense so obviously you want to use his expertise as a builder and give that some weight when in your decision process when I, I initially contracted with Peter to build the house, I got very, that's another blessing that I got because it was just in the beginning of the COVID price increases from building materials, wood, steel, trailers, cabinets, fridges, everything like that, but it had not really gotten out of control yet. So this unit, I probably all in at about $120,000. Now I did provide some of the appliances, the washer and dryer, stuff like that. So that's not into the price, but I've talked to Peter a few times about it. To replace it, it's probably on $200,000 nowadays. And it's sad to a certain extent because I know people that in the very beginning started the tiny house lifestyle. That's not why they, why they did it because of the, and then the costs were half of that. And I understand it. 
the good thing is, is it allows people like Peter and his company to build a nice quality piece. There are still the people I see on bulletin boards and are still attached to the fact that they want a tiny house for $30,000. And anytime somebody prices something like this and they're trying to sell it on the used market over there, they always complain that that's too much. Well, I get that, but I don't think people that are on the outside looking in that don't oh, have never owned a tiny house, they don't see what goes into building one of these things nowadays. They get compared to mobile home prices, and that, that doesn't translate. It's not apples to apples. And probably the other one thing you really, really need to do your homework on and research is where are you going to park it? Any large city, it's going to be very tough to find a place in the city to park your tiny house because uh, cities aren't real receptive to it. I like the fact that I'm not financially tied down by where I was before. I worried too much about having to service the debt I had on the house, the property taxes, the utilities, and everything that came along with it. When I moved here two years ago, the combination of no property taxes, low property rent, and the free time that I enjoy from it. In the spring and summer, I would spend three to five hours a day on the weekends mowing and weed eating and watering. Now that's all free time I get. It's easy for me to keep everything clean. You know, one of the nice positive things about living in a tiny house, it takes me 10 minutes to clean my tiny house between vacuuming and mopping floors or wiping things down. It, and I like the fact, that, I don't want this to sound wrong, but I like the fact that since I'm single, if I leave something in one spot, it's there when I come back next week. And this stage in my life right now, it's okay. I can't see myself wanting to be single the, you know, the rest of my life, but you know, it's gonna take right person would understand this situation to where they could also live in the tiny house at the same time too so that's that kind of like weeds out typically finding somebody else that you want to you know have a relationship with so it's uh it's very unique in that fact i do like it it's been a great transition because like i said it really freed up a lot of things that were tying me down watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.